Afternoon, everyone. Um, my third LSI, um, boy, has it grown. Um, but the common thread that runs through all of these events is innovation, right? Amazing innovations in med tech, medical device, pharmaceutical, and it's great to see all of that coming together. Um, we align into that innovation curve, and I'm going to introduce uh, our product and our uh, company to you. Fundamental VR is the company. Our product is called Fundamental Surgery. Um, and what we do as a business is we uh, use virtual reality and some cutting edge haptic technology to accelerate the learning curve in surgical skills acquisition. Um, it's complicated, there's a lot to learn. And I'm not talking about early stage residency learning here, I'm talking about the innovations that the people in this room are putting in to surgeons who know how to do their current technique but need to acquire a new skill or a new approach. That's really where we come in. As a business, our vision is all about this. Pre-human competence. What I mean by that is the idea that you shouldn't learn on me. That learning curve in that new device might be 20, 20 uh, iterations, it might be 100 iterations. Most of that learning happens in the operating room. We want to, with our technology, create the opportunity for that to happen away from the operating room, away from human specimens, away from patients, so that nurses, surgeons, the team around those surgeons can enter into those environments with real competence, real pre-human competence. That's really what we're all about as a, as a company, and that's the vision and the destination that we are heading towards with the technology that we're building. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, as a business, uh, we've been running now for about eight years. Um, we have quite a large team, really talented team of uh, engineers, educators, haptic uh, developers, visual developers, educationalists that together bring together our platform. They work hand in hand with an extensive uh, collective of uh, surgeons and, and expert educators in their fields. Um, we deliver our product seamlessly across the world uh, for companies such as, uh, as, as the people in this room today. Um, we're based out of uh, three locations, uh, London, Boston, and Cincinnati. And we, uh, as I said, we work with the medical device and, and the pharma space. We're a VC-backed business. We raised our Series B last year, um, proud to have a number of fantastic VCs uh, and strategic investors around us, including EQT Life Sciences and the Mayo Clinic. So our core proposition as a business is all about this, accelerating the adoption of medical devices and the techniques that go around them. We, through our system, lower the cost, we increase the scale, we deliver a significant return on investment into the platform itself. So let me show you a little bit of that. I'm gonna run this video, it takes one minute, just to give you a quick overview of how the whole system comes together. You'll see a lot of hardware here, technology. We don't make any hardware at all. We're pure software, we ingest our software into leading off-the-shelf hardware to keep the costs low. multiple VR headsets, collaboration, allowing us to really collapse distance, bringing people together seamlessly, using different haptic devices from gloves through to grounded haptics to deliver the sense of touch, force, weight, resistance across multiple different medical disciplines, allowing you to achieve that sense of real competence and capability before you go into the learning and into the operating environment. Seamlessly coming together with real time feedback to the users to allow them to understand the output of their uh, interaction in those different scenarios, allowing them to build up a profile of their learning as they keep going through that iterative process. Ultimately, this is about giving you the opportunity to rehearse multiple times before you enter that operating environment. And that's the fundamental surgery platform, in essence. 
Um, it's made up of lots of different bits of technology, and I won't waste your time on it today. Core things that, that, that are uh, a part of that is a standalone VR using simple off-the-shelf headsets, very low cost, great for, uh, great for scale, great for early stage learning. Uh, haptic VR, where we're delivering the full procedural rehearsal, allowing us to achieve real skills transfer, and both of them using collaboration uh, to allow us to put people together into environments, irrespective of where they are in the world. All of that on a platform that supports third-party content, so many of you will already have uh, uh, content and educational material that you want to preserve and, and bring into this environment. Our platform supports all of that, and all of it uh, collecting really important data around performance, interaction, and outcome. It's really a platform that scales with the introduction of a medical device from preclinical through to full commercialization, from simple procedural run through using standalone headsets, as you see on the, uh, the left of this is, uh, as you look at it, through to the full haptic interaction, allowing us to give a full replication of a particular sur surgical procedure, or just the moment that you need to achieve that skills transfer for within that procedure itself. Again, not really for early st stage learning here. I'm talking about tenured uh, surgeons who are acquiring a new skill within uh, an area that they may well know, know very well themselves. So does it work? Well, the short answer is yes, it does. There's a lot of validation out there now, some of it from us and, and from many other institutions as well. This, the, the, the data is well published and, and, and uh, reviewed extensively. VR versus traditional training, you're looking at somewhere between a two to 300% improvement in the knowledge acquisition in that space. Lots of different studies covering the different, different outputs in that area. When it comes to skills acquisition, what we find on top of that two to 300% improvement in knowledge acquisition, we get another 40 to 50% in the uh, skills acquisition when we add haptics into the interaction. And just to break that out a little bit, here's an example of one of the studies. This is from the NHS in the UK. It was a replication of a study done in uh, NYU Langone in the previous year, looking at soft tissue damage around drilling techniques and using haptics versus normal VR to see whether you could improve the patient outcome. The short answer is those surgeons that used haptic VR versus normal VR improved their outcome by about 44%. They reduced their plunge within this drilling test by about 44% and increased their OSAT scores significantly over normal VR. And remember, normal VR is already a massive plus up on standard techniques. So we've got some really significant improvements that are, that are occurring here. In terms of the application of this, well, it's as wide as the industry. Um, these are just some examples of the, of the sectors and the disciplines that the, the uh, platform has already been deployed into with, uh, with medical device and, and pharmaceutical organizations into their, their end users within the hospital and healthcare provider environment. So truly scalable and universally adaptable to any particular skills transfer or training need. Ultimately, as I said, it's all about the acceleration of the learning curve, the acceleration of human capability via what we call precision simulation, the combination of the immersion of, hapt of, of virtual reality with the interaction that comes from haptic interaction. If you'd like to know more, I'd love to chat to you. Thank you. <laughs>